Malas here, heterosexual couples also don't have rights that equate to them. Malas, there are categories within categories created. Man and woman don't have same rights. A single man and a single woman do not have same rights. For the first preposition, that is the child has a right to be born and raised by a biological by biological parents. Malas, for this, I will rely on note two of the Learned Solicitor General for India, Malas. Your lordships will kindly have page 39 to 49 of that note. There are some research papers also which is there in their compilation, but Learned SG's note quotes the paragraphs that are relevant. If your lordships will kindly take that with me, Malats, page 39 of note 2 of Learned SG. Only for the purpose of these two prepositions, that the legitimate state interest of ideal mode of child rearing. Malats, all children are naturally born only to heterosexual couples. And now, my lords, when I take your lordships through the architecture of my lords laws which are relating to children, there are no competing rights in this space, my lords. The only sacrosanct, paramount right is that of the child. To the extent that sometimes a child may need to be protected from himself, the entire, my lords, architecture of these laws are from the concept of welfare of child being paramount. So, my lords, my respectful submission is if your lordships will, my lords have page 39 of learned SG's note, my lords. Which note? Uh, note Lord? 2, my lords. Note 2. Note 2 of the learned SG. Okay. This chapter, my lords, the violation 2. Note 2. Note 2. PDF page 39. My lords, it's running 39 PDF should be PDF of 44. Yes. it could be, my lords. 42. I'm grateful. 42, my lords. 42. The legitimate 42. state interest of ideal mode of child rearing. Am I, yes. my lords? Page uh, 42 starts with note 2, fundamental rights, para 59. My lords, this is para 63. 63. Very well. Bottom. Got it. Yes. My lords, we'll see, my lords. This is for the preposition that legitimate state interest of ideal mode of child rearing. Now, Lordships will, my lords, the fundamental point is that a child can only be naturally born through a heterosexual couple. And therefore, the special significance of recognition of heterosexual marriages cannot be understated from the point of view of child. Birth of child and bringing up of the child, both. Alads, there are some very interesting papers that have been put together, my lads, in the research of this note. And my lads, these papers show that fathers and mothers both play complementary roles in upbringing of the child. And state is justified in treating homosexual and heterosexual unions differently for that purpose. The first paper, my lads, that is quoted in para 66 is straight is better while law and society may legitimately prefer homosexual heterosexuality. Is a paper, my lads, from a professor of law, my lads, of Case Western University, Ohio. The evidence shows that conventional beats unconventional every time. This means that complexities and ambiguities of non-traditional families come at a price. But Ms. Bharti, our law permits a single person to adopt a child. My lads, Permit me to come to that now. Yes. Your lordships will see this, my lords. The learned SG did not place it. Lordship may right. note that this is, my lords, from page 39 to 49 on both the prepositions. The first is, my lords, that the legitimate straight interest and that I showed to your lordships and that there are some papers, my lords, on there is lack of data to establish equivalence with biological heterogeneous upbringing of children. Lordship may see it. I'm just, I just brought it to your Lordship's notice because it was uh, uh, the learned SD left it to me, my Lords. Right. My Lords, my respectful submission is your Lordship may go, go the slowest when it comes to rights of child. Yes. My Lords, para six, just two lines, my Lords. My Lords, I'm sorry, my Lords, I'll just read. There are just two lines, my Lords. Justice call me. Uh, kindly bear with me, my Lords. This is... Uh, uh, 1984 to SCC 244, para 6, just two lines, my lords. It, it is obvious that in a civilized society, the importance of child welfare cannot be overemphasized because the welfare of entire community, its growth and development depends on the health and well-being of children. 
Children are a supremely important national asset, and the future well-being of the nation depends on how its children grow and develop. The great poet Milton put it admirably, and he said, child shows the man as morning shows the day. And study team of social welfare said much to the same effect when it said physical and mental health of a nation is determined largely by the manner in which it is shaped in the early stages. Just that much. This is well taken, but uh, you must show children in the context of same sex. My lords, my respectful submission is from the perspective no. to show to your lordships that this architecture is carefully crafted. My lords, my lords here, heterosexual couples also don't have rights that equate to them. My lords, there are categories within categories created. Man and woman don't have same rights. A single man and a single woman do not have same rights. So from that perspective, my lords, there is no, in fact, the only recognition is to the child's right. In fact, when I, I I'll show to your lordships, my lords, your lordships saw that section three, my lords, with me. My lords, then please come to straight away chapter eight of the Juvenile Justice Act, my lords. Since we had given you 30 minutes, we are already now 45. I'm sorry. So, no, no, not at all. You made a very valid point and you are, uh, you never, you never, uh, you know, yeah, everything that you say is always very precise and uh, full of substance. So uh, just formulate your submission so that, you know, forget the submission. We we'll leave the submissions, of Fine. course. But if you can just formulate it, you know, so that then we can take it down and then we can focus on it. Lodges may go through only my note. Just part B is the portion that I've dealt with. I am, I'm just going to quickly tell your Lodges. If you can just uh, sort of highlight what are the key areas, because I think now we've seen the broad uh, architecture, etc. of the law that you have showed us. Can formulate three or four it's, key submissions and then we can. Uh, my lords, that. my lords, may note, my lords, in the CARA adoption guidelines, the latest ones are of uh, 23rd of September 22. That's at page 228, my lords, in this compilation A. And just my one lords, second. Let's just take it one second. 228, my lords. 3rd of September. My lords, this is 23rd September 22. These are the latest guidelines, but I put the old guidelines of 2017 also, and there are very little changes. The architecture continues in the same manner. Ms. Party, what page? Do you Malas, this is page uh, 228 in compilation A. Compilation A. And my lords, your lordships will pay close attention, my lords, is my respectful submission to the general principles governing adoption, regulation three, regulation four, child eligible for adoption. My lords, this OM that came, was from steering committee Malad's, uh, discussions. One point that was put was that child is trans. How is he dealt with in CARA guidelines? CARA guidelines make no distinction. What is the gender of the child? What is the disability of the child, if any? What is the what age of age? Malad, so protection is given only on two occasions. What is the age on which it is given? So logic will have a quick look at regulation five. That gives, my lords, regulation four gives child who's fit for adoption and regulation five gives eligibility for adoptive parents.